Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, and this is the Ramble. I'll try and do it tonight without fucking up. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, out there, out there in the lovely uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, the song stylings of Stephen... What was, oh, hi everybody. Yeah, hi there with your sound that isn't that good. When are you going to get your computer fixed? Oh, I called somebody up to look at it, and they said they charged $125 for a house call. I go, well, hell, I can get a new computer for that much. So I said, no, thank you. Yeah, you don't need that. You don't need that. I got to have some Korean kid and just have him do it and then free him afterwards. Oh, really? Oh, okay. A bag of candy corn and, uh, you know, send him on his way. Excuse me, folks, if I made my arrow go in the, see? See, I can do that with him. But I I don't want that. Okay. Anyway. So uh, you, 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 125 bucks. I'm telling you, if I, was, like 100 an hour. <laughs> if I were there, yeah. I could fix it for you in 20 minutes. Well, come on out. Vegas is happening, baby. You know, I mean, all you got to do is, is you got to go in there and you got to like erase the whole hard drive. That's it. Yeah. And then, sure. then reinstall the operating system, which is very simple and start from scratch. Then, and put in a new password and then write it down so you remember it. See, the problem he has, he has a computer, but he can't remember the password. That's I've it. I've used four of them in my life and none of them work. So, you know, it's not that I can't remember it. I think the machine has uh, gone batty on me. Well, I've got a, P- a, a PC here, uh, uh-huh. and it actually recognizes me from the camera. I don't even uh-huh. have to have a password. It just goes, oh, that's, that's Alex. Cool. That's, that's modern. That's mine's years old. So, uh, no, actually, uh, your yours would probably do this if you have a camera in it. Yeah. It's got a camera in it. Yeah, so. it would do it because most PCs now with the new PC software have that built in. So, yeah. Oh, so okay. you could do that. Well, come on out, man. There's cheap flights. You know, I, I'm are... dealing, you know, it's funny. With, with you guys, I'm dealing with the biggest bunch of Luddites that I've ever had to deal with. I mean, your arm is getting tired from holding up your phone. Yeah. Bubbles can't even get onto the phone. That's right. You know, I mean, Bubbles Bubbles is just, it, forget it. He, well, he it, He's a 1985, man. If we ever see a video of him, we'll probably be so, uh, sorely disappointed because he probably got a facelift and looks gorgeous. <laughs> Looks yeah. like a Chinese ET. Yeah, you know, but I mean, uh, it's like he doesn't get, he doesn't get, he has a good reason for not getting a phone, I think. And that but, good reason is he feels that if he got one, it would ruin his reputation. Uh huh. You know. As what? <laughs> <laughs> As what, exactly. And <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So, how have you been? Oh, good. I've decided to form and manage a uh, stuttering doo group. So, uh, it's never been done before. A stuttering <laughs> doo-wop group? Six or five guys doing that. The stammer tones. I can see it the now. Stammer the stammer tones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, five guys doing that. I'd pay to see that. Yeah, you've been indoors too long. angel. <laughs> <laughs> you've been indoors too long, my friend. Anyway. Um, no. Here it's 100 degrees outside. Uh, I got the air conditioning it's, on. The green hats are here. We got nothing going on. It's 100 it's degrees inside. It's good. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting there. Now it's you have a, you have a new place, right? Than the one you yeah. had. Yeah. Because you got kicked out of the one you were in for. Oh no, I didn't get kicked out. I uh, well, it was it was a standoff. It was yeah. a Polish standoff, a Jewish Japanese standoff. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I was glad to get out of there. It was falling apart anyway. So you uh, probably could have cool. stayed there. This place is smaller but much better. I like it. I don't like. And the other place had a had a guarded gate, and as you know, Jews don't like gates with guards at them. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> it reminds us of a simpler time. Yeah. So uh, I like cool. it here much better. I have a friend who moved into the complex, and another friend who's moving in. So it's just a nice little uh, older people thing. 
older people? Oh, now you're relating to older people. And I'm one of the youngest people here. It's like Civil War veterans and their parents, as they say. So, well, uh, let's see here. You could become the elder comic. Yeah. Yeah, and you could start, like, doing older people jokes. Like, uh, yeah, sure. I have arthritis so bad. <laughs> My bursitis is so bad how many people, oh, wait a minute, you snuck in here, you put on stick on age spots, so you're not really 65, get out of here. What I, I'll tell you what I hate about aging. There are a couple of things I hate about aging. Number one, my bags keep getting droopier and droopier to the point where I'm going to be droopy dog pretty soon. <laughs> but but um, uh, uh, the, the thing is that you grow hair, you lose hair up here. All right. Down there. Okay. You well, lose hair. Right side to kill Superman. You lose hair there, but all of a sudden it starts coming out of your ears. Oh yeah, you get new hair. And it comes coming before. out of your nose. I mean, you grow hair in places you never grew hair before. Right. Yeah, hair in your ears. My God. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what is with that? I used to have hair over my ears. Now I have hair in my ears. Oh yeah. They, people, it, what is the purpose of this? What? Yeah, there's a god. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's a God. If yeah, there was a God, he wouldn't do this to us, okay? Well, jokes. <laughs> and then my, wa well, my, wa things, my wife see. today said, uh, uh, you want to see my, uh, my uh, modeling portfolio? <laughs> and I said, no, I don't. And she said, why didn't you want to see my mo modeling portfolio? Uh, it's, it's pictures of you when you were in your 20s, and I can't lay my hands on that woman. That's God forever. <laughs> okay. And so she shows me all these photos of this person I never met, okay, <laughs> you know, posing, you know. And, and uh, she looks great. I mean, she looks great in them. But, you know, that's Correct. then that's and real. this is now. So what are you trying to show me? Here are the goods you never got? What? You know? <laughs> because It's all a piece. Because when she was younger, she was my type. Uh -huh. You know, I got hot for that kind of woman, you know. And that was a while ago. And here Only I ago. Yeah, and there are even naked pictures of her. They're, they're nude photos of her. Jeez. And I'm going, gee, all that that went up is now going down. That's the way you know? it is. Gravity takes its course. Yeah. So, I mean, you would think that if there was a god as you got older, you got better uh -huh. looking, you know, or something like that. Oh, I'll leave you Caesar Romero. Now, you ready for the death of the month? Oh, what's the death of the month? Uh, Norman Lloyd died. Who's Norman Lloyd? Norman Lloyd is, I think, the oldest actor in SAG. Wow. Yeah. Well, I've seen him in. Hundred, we met, you remember um, Saboteur Hitchcock? Yeah. You remember the guy who falls off the uh, Statue of Liberty? Oh, how about that? That wow. was Norman Lloyd. Oh, man, he knew how to fall off a statue. Yeah. He was amazing. Uh, and he was uh, just a you know a great actor. He'd been around for a long time. Uh, just Timothy in fact, Cowley he was working. Until his last film was 2015. Okay. Wow. He must Jeez, have made that. that mile long resume. Probably made that when he was 101. Even more than William Showart, this guy. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, he lived to be older than Kirk Douglas, who made it to what 103. 102 or 103, something like yeah, that. Yeah, and his wife just died. Kirk Douglas' right. wife, she died at 102. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a long life. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, if, if Michael Douglas is a orphan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know? My father was sitting around saying, kill me. Somebody kill me. Did you ever think about that, though, in your parents? You, you've lost both of your parents, have you? Yeah, they're both, uh, they're both uh, you know, yeah. elsewhere. When, when the last one went, did you immediately think, I'm an orphan? Mm, I was kind of thinking. Well, I think you're only an orphan if you're under 18. I think yeah, that's the I was thing. Free at last, free at last. Ooh. You know, after that, you just lost a parent. You know. Yeah, I was. You know, so my I'm mother went. My mother went at a hundred, and I was. How old was I at the time? Gee, it was. Uh, I was maybe. I was maybe 60, 60 something, and uh, I didn't think. Hey, gee, now I'm an orphan. Yeah. You don't think about that when you're old. No, I didn't think about that. Now I'm an orphan. You know, I was like, yeah. What do you but know? when you're it's like, cool. when you're like five years old, oh, poor kids, an orphan. Oh, poor little kids, an orphan. Now I'm like, yeah, what am I, sixty-five? Yeah, you. I think <laughs> I think is uh, until you move out, you're an orphan if both parents yeah. die. Yep, I think that's, that's true. what it is. <laughs>
Uh, but that's uh, those are those are some jokes you could incorporate in your old person act. That's right. How many people remember the good old days? I'll yeah. tell you. Now my tribute to the great Ned Blast, ladies and gentlemen. And, 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 but you haven't you haven't gotten the best. I mean, you start getting these things that you never thought you would get. Like I have neuropathy. What? The, uh -huh. You know, I don't want to have an old person's thing to complain about. Oh, my neuropathy is acting up. Damn. You know. <laughs> Bursitis, uh, that's the old and then, then see this, see this, um, you see that black and blue mark? Oh my God, stop shooting up. You know, I, well, they shot me up on Monday. They shot you up? They, oh, I've been shot up there in the hospital. Though. They shot that's me fun. up with a, um, uh, with the, for, this is for arthritis, okay? They put a arthritis, cortisone treatment yeah. in there. Slowly, the, the pain is going away, though. I'll have to admit that, you know. But uh, so so these are the things that happen to you as you get older and you go, do I have to believe in God? Because if there was a God, these things wouldn't be going on. Things would be getting better. Oh, they're there. You're 80 years old now. Yeah. Uh, all of a sudden, your dick is going to be bigger than it's ever been. You know, something <laughs> like that. You yeah. have to suffer if you want to go to paradise. It, <laughs> instead of looking down at it and going, come on. Come on, <laughs> you know. I mean, he hates his creations. Yeah, you know, it used to be. It, my penis used to be my best friend. Now it's uh, now it's just somebody who doesn't want to have anything to do with me. Uh huh. Yeah. So you know, I was asking. I, I I interviewed Will Durst the other day from his hospital bed. Right. How's he doing? He's doing fine. You know. I mean, he's doing fine. For, I mean, you say how's he doing? He had a stroke. You know, yeah, he, I mean, there's a limit. Can't pole vault anymore. There's a limit to how good you can do when you've had a stroke. That's true. Yeah, 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 that's true. Uh, but he had, but, but really he's happened? got, a, you know, he's got a great spirit about it. He's trying to do something about it. It's it's a long haul. It's a real long haul. Sure it is. And and uh, but I, I, you know, I was interviewing him and I asked him. I said, don't don't get bothered when I ask you this question. Do you ever get horny? I mean, ah. you've had a stroke. You're lying in bed. You know you got to learn how to walk in your arm and the dead, the dead. But that shouldn't come between you and your penis. You know, <laughs> do you ever get horny? He says, "Oh yeah, all the time. We got these Filipino nurses around here, oh. AIDS." He said, "There's some really good-looking ones, you know." You want the I said, you want "I the said, well, what, what do you do about it?" He said, "Well, you know, we have lots of Kleenex here in the lotion." <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> hey, get it done, baby. Get it done, baby. Roll yeah. the dice. Roll the dice. So, I mean, but I just, I just, I, I guess I just don't like getting older. You know, it, it, it's. Who does? Who the it, fuck wants to get older? Yeah. And then you just fall apart and then yeah. you're dead. Yeah. Well, let's see here. You didn't you, didn't you, you recently had an operation, right? Yeah, it was a more of a procedure. A procedure. procedure. I see. Uh, yeah, it's AFib, last August 26th. Were you in and out in one day or? And out one day. It's and an outpatient then, yeah. procedure. Yep, the outpatient. They went in me, but I yeah. and I went out. And so, how did uh, do you fibrillate anymore? No, I haven't had a single episode. And uh, boy, have I been stressed. So uh, no. Yeah. So what I, they have I to go in? Any, they have to I mean, go into the chest to do that, or what do they do? The, the groin. The, oh, the groin. Oh, the, oh, they do the groin thing where they stick it, something. It'd be a good old groin, a good old catheter. But I was out of it, so I felt I don't remember a thing. I never got this one either. <laughs> To get to the heart now, they go through your groin. Uh huh. You know. Uh, Whatever they did, it works. So yeah. What? Whatever they did, it works. So yeah. We, yeah, but that's how they get to your heart now. Yeah. You know, I mean, and unless you got to have a bypass, then they crack you open like a nut. You know. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh God. And you wind up yeah. with a zipper job. Get the old rib cracker. <laughs> but my heart is supposedly in great shape, so you know. But everything else is falling apart. Uh, yeah, something's gonna get you. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna go. T I take my daily walk that I do uh, every day, I do that. and it just. But I don't. I can't walk as well as I used to. Uh -huh. You know, it's really getting to me. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm sick and tired of getting sick and tired. So uh, you've been working at all? Uh, been, uh, he has to adjust his phone. What are you doing? What are you doing? Now you lost the audio? Hello? Can you hear me? Boop. Oh, there, there you go. go. There you go. Just to, back? Yeah. Uh, you no, know, that's why you got to get your computer. La, 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 la. That didn't work. What? It's all working. It's working. Oh, Don't touch anything. 
There we go. I, I get these phone calls that say scam likely because these bullshit calls I don't answer, but the video goes off when I get them. Can't you, like can't you do something with your phone that puts all calls on hold, I mean, where you just don't get them? For the time I'd being. like to do that, yes. I don't want to get any calls from anyone, ever. What happens is he gets a call, and then in order to get rid of it, he's got to punch his screen, which gets in the way of the camera, which yeah. Yeah, it causes all... We got to get, we gotta get that on. computer of yours working, damn it. I know, that computer was So have you there. been doing any work at all? Have you been... Uh, because everything's opening up, right? Yeah, everything's opening up. I got... That, I, have, I did that commercial. We're doing another... We're filming another one on May 24th. I got uh, the Laugh Factory in the middle of June, and then I'm doing the Laugh Factory in Reno in July, and that's enough. You know, <laughs> a, little, a few gigs here and there is good wow. enough for me. that's pretty good. Well, you got something. I, you got I something. It's, come, it's slowly coming back. Slowly coming back. Uh, are, the, the, uh, are, the showrooms, are the showrooms opening up again? Or Yeah, yeah. And Brad Gavis Club told me to get in touch with them in the summer to hopefully work for them. So oh, you know, we'll see. You know, we'll good. good. That sounds uh, well. It sounds like it, it, you're going to be doing what you like to do best. I'm still here, you bastards. <laughs> Which is to do, I, co- I, I, to, I, to do comedy so you can get laid. It's. I used to do comedy so I get laid. Now I do it so I get paid and go home. I <laughs> get paid instead of laid. <laughs> get laid. Yeah, get paid. Um, good. These days I'm good for two thrusts. Then I want to watch cartoons. Yeah, come on. Do, do, during this whole COVID thing, have you sat down and went, boy, that's a funny joke I just made up and I have nowhere to do it. Except with exactly, except yeah, with yeah. Bennett, maybe you know. I do this with podcast shows, you know, as you go on, it's like ten other comics, and they all suck, and everyone's talking over each other. I won't do those. So, no, I just, uh, I just hold on to my jokes and try to remember. I don't know why I haven't done that kind of podcast show. I should get you together with uh, Kravitz and per and Bubbles and um, uh, 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 Durst, and we, uh, you know, I'll do it with guys I know, but I'm not going to do these stupid fucking open micro shows like ten other people who suck. You know. Well, I mean, asking a comedian to do his act, did they ask yeah. you to do your act? Yeah, yeah, no, let's just riff and talk. I'm not going to do my act. There's no audience here. Fuck yeah, you. But they don't know how. To, most people don't know how to riff and talk with other comics. You know, I mean, the one thing I developed is I knew how to get a group of five comics in a room and make uh-huh. it work. You know. Yeah. Mainly because number one, I'm not a comedian, so I wasn't competing. So I just let you guys go. You're David Susskind, yeah. Yeah, you know, and uh, uh, so, but but I would imagine some of these things are dreadful because probably the person hosting them doesn't know how to do it. Exactly. Yeah, I've watched a couple of them. I won't do them, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, they're pretty bad. Gee, I ought to I ought to do something with a bunch of you. You know, I'd rather suck on a wet turd. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, uh, we've kind of run out of time here. Already? Well, join us next week, folks. Same channel, same time. We're going to, yeah. So, anyway. (laughs) The Jack Money Program is brought to you by Vita Experts. It's brought brought to you by Jell-O. By Jell-O, J-E-L-L-O. And and then later on, they went from Jell-O to Lucky Strikes. I mean, (laughs) here's a comedian, Jack Benny, who is, I think, one of my favorites because he, you know what he was? He, he was like me. He, I, people say, Alex, are you a comedian? And I said, I'm a broadcast comedian. Broadcast. You, you know, a broadcast comedian. And they go, oh, is that something new? And I went, no, Jack Benny was a broadcast comedian. Mm-hmm. He basically did his best work and his best comedy on radio and television. He was amazing. Okay. But he, he was, was a broadcast comedian. Uh, uh, a comedian, uh, you know, he used to in the early years. He went on stages and did stuff, but for most of the rest of his life, that wasn't what he did. Yeah, and uh, so I always honored him as 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 a broadcast comedian, and that's what I loved uh, about him. Yeah, uh, but it's interesting if you want to think about the negatives. Let's let's give it the the you know we have this this woke movement in this country. People have suddenly come to realize. You know what was horrible about Jack Benny? He probably caused more cancer in this country <laughs> than any human being because his sponsor it was, Don was, was a, Don Wilson did the commercials. I blame him. Yeah, because he was sponsored for the last many years of his career by Lucky Strike. LSMFT, get happy, go lucky. Back to you, Jack. Yeah, LSMFT. What did it stand for? Lucky strike means find a bag oh, Very good, very I'm good. I'm confused with LSD, which stands for lycergic acid methylamide. <laughs> Diethylamide. 
Tart- really oh, wait a minute. Jack. Diethylamide tartrate. Oh, even better, Jack. <laughs> it was LSD, and there was a tartrate at the end of it. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Invented by a, uh, fi- discovered by a doctor, discovered. by a Dr. Hoffman. Dr. Hoffman, in, yes. Dr. In, Hoffman. in Switzerland, who <laughs> uh, was looking for a cure for uh, migraine headaches. And he'd been working on one thing, which was this lysergic acid. And he was driving home on his bicycle. And all of a sudden, he got woozy and he started seeing hallucinations. And he couldn't figure out what it was. And the next day, he remembered that he'd been playing with this uh, LSD, this lysergic acid diethylamide. And he accidentally touched his tongue with his finger. Uh And he had gotten a dose of this, so he tried it again, and sure enough, <laughs> off to La La Land he Not went. Again, yeah, first and second trip ever. Now, what's interesting, you want another little fact about LSD? This will really get you. Did you ever hear of a disease that hit France in, I think, the 17th century, something like that called St. Elmo's Fire? I've heard that term. Yeah, well, St. Elmo's Fire was this disease that would infect an entire village and they would go crazy. They saw hallucinations, they did all of that, right? That's true. What they found out in going back and looking at the records and everything, here's what happened. The rye in their granaries went bad. Wow. And when rye goes bad, it becomes a hallucinogenic. And so everybody was eating rye bread in these towns and then oh. started hallucinating. Oh so what God. Hoffman was doing was synthesizing what they had in that rye bread. Ah, oh, how about that? And that's where we got LSD from. The thank you. Van Gogh had some of that when he made Starry Night. Thank, hey, what's you tripping on? Thank, <laughs> thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And you can, uh, if you want to, you can uh, get credits for this course I just gave. That's true. Hey, that's listen. Mr. Good talking to you, my friend. Good talking to you, my Always friend. great talking to the great Stephen Pearl, who's playing absolutely nowhere, but when he is, go see him so that he go won't... Go see me when I'm playing a, a, somewhere. And laugh a lot. You will. You'll have to laugh. It's the law. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen... up your life. Bye, Stephen. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Thank you very much, Stephen Pearl. Yay, Stephen Pearl. Okay, hello, everybody. I'm Alex Bennett. Uh, thanks for joining the program. Uh, I didn't know it was falling apart. Thank you. It's joining the program. Whatever. Anyway, how are you? What is this? Tea tree oil. Why did I have this? I had this for some ailment that Marjorie said it would be really good, and it smells interesting it smells like it should get you high but it's called tea tree oil if anybody knows what it is let me know it's one of the many medicinal things that marjorie uh, puts out there for me anyway uh let's see here uh otherwise i did my walk again today today i walked out if you if you go over to facebook don't watch this show you can just go over to facebook and watch the video of me at the park. Nobody really watches it, but I do it anyway. And on this one, I talk about, uh, um, what do I talk about? Oh, I talk about uh, the uh, Jewish Socialist Bund and uh, versus the Zionists. And uh, I sit there on a park bench talking about this kind of stuff. So occasionally I do stuff on Facebook, um, which I'm gonna stop doing, because I think they're, they're, they're holding back on some of my numbers there's something wrong because all of a sudden the numbers went precipitously down and it's something that they did at facebook and um, something they probably did with their own best interests at heart and uh so anyway what the hell you know i just do the show i i do it to keep me alive and uh it, if that's the only thing it does fine and if we don't have any listeners uh fuck it in fact, we just lost two of them just a second ago. Anyway, let me bring some people in here. Let me see here for this citizen panel. There's some of these. Some, they're basically right now the usual suspects. Uh, and uh, actually, if you want to, you can you can call and not be one of the usual suspects. 
But here they are. There's Jeff, and there's Brian, and there's Alan, and Charlie Wallace should be coming along soon. Uh, he should be joining us soon. And uh, hello to all of you. How are you? Good. Oh, well, that's exciting. Yes. Yeah. Oh, he's true. When I when I got off, off of the show last night, I heard Alan say he's not going to do any more comedy. So I guess he's guess he's starting off right away. Right. Did you, did you say something, Brian? <laughs> Why did you leave last night? I didn't get that. You had to go watch a basketball the game? The basketball Golden State Warriors were playing the L.A. Lakers. So I was here for halftime and I had to go. Oh, I see. Okay, so we were your halftime show. Yeah, and I just remembered that, and I go, oh, shoot, I got to go, so, yeah. And what, you had friends at the house watching it, too? No, just me yelling and screaming by myself. Oh, really? Yeah. Big, big fan, are you, of the basketball? Baseball, basketball, and then and football. And Char Charlie and I, <laughs> we have a little rivalry for football. But yeah. uh, and, then, and then Adrian will come by with her iPad. She's playing, and I said, baby, get away from here. You don't want to be here. So, because, you know, right when something happens, you know, start yelling and screaming and, and you, you some do foul know that Years from now, in a psychiatrist's office, Adrian is going to be talking to the psychiatrist, and he's going to be saying, so what do you think was the worst problem when you were a kid? Daddy yeah. never played with me when he was watching this thing with a basketball. <laughs> and that's why I went out and killed half the population of San Jose. <laughs> no, she plays basketball with me now, so. It's Does good. she really? Oh, okay. Yeah, good. we go outside. Well, why don't you let her watch the game with you? Because it's she could be injured, especially last night's game. So. <laughs> what do you mean she could be injured? What do you do? <laughs> Because when something happens, that yelling and screaming and and come on, Charlie, what happens? Yeah, really? Oh see, yeah. See, I was never into sports like that. That's insanity. It's a grown. It's it's something inside that has to be grown with you. Like when Char Charlie loves the Cowboys and I love the Eagles. When our yeah. two teams play, it's not just somebody like you could come over and sit down with us and understand the the stuff that's going in our body at every <laughs> single play. It's just something, yeah, it's it's. Did crazy. I ever get that excited over sports? I, I got a little excited over sports once. Uh, uh, baseball sometimes. If I'm watching like, but if I'm watching something in which there's something at stake, like it's the World Series, and it's the final game. That excites me for some hmm. reason. But only baseball. Basketball, eh, guys running back and forth with dribbling a ball. Big deal. I never saw any value in that. But baseball was a skill. I think that's why I like baseball. It's not really an athletic endeavor, in my opinion, as much as it's a skill. Am I right, Charlie, or am I wrong? wrong. I got to disagree with you there. Really? Yeah, basketball. I mean, baseball is a skill. Baseball well, is a I said it's an athletic just, event. Well, I don't know about that you because be an what, let me let me explain something here to you. I if, understand. Why if a know. guy uh, is uh, out of shape, it's probably <laughs> because he doesn't do a lot of sports, right? So well, if if it is, so if 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 baseball was a good exercise as a uh, sport then you wouldn't have the best baseball players of all time being a fat ass like Babe Ruth. <laughs> right? There, you there know. are 300 pound guys on the front line. Those guys aren't skinny. Well, well that's in football though. Yeah. Yeah. That's in football. But they're there. the reason they're so heavy is because they're just these brutes, you know. So, you know, that's the reason. I, I, think, I think what you're saying though is that there's, I, and I, I do believe that there's more of a strategy with baseball, even though people don't see it if they don't understand the game, because every pitch means something, even though it's something. Oh, yeah. you, oh, it, it may just be a ball or it may just be something, but actually that pitch is setting up another pitch. Or, well, or I, just, I just always felt it was more a skill than an athletic pursuit. And I, <laughs> the reason I liked it was because it was, you know, uh, a skill. I, I love it. Baseball is a thinking man's game. Yeah. yeah. Why? 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 Why do you say that? I don't. I. I understand because what you're saying. Because there's so much strategy going on. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it is the most geometrically perfect game ever created. 
that whole the, 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 they said if they had changed the the distance between the bases even by an inch the whole game would change oh mm -hmm. yeah you know oh yeah that it, it's geographically perfect as a game yep. and and they changed the outfields and you know giants have done some terrible things the last couple of years but they changed the outfields and stuff like that and that changes the game a lot because you know there, mm -hmm. there, there you go with different kind of records and stuff like that but yeah giants, giants were like the last team that still had the pitching warm-up uh right alongside first and third base mm -hmm. uh, they just changed that they just put the bullpen yeah. back and i used to love that because i used to go to candlestick and our seats were on first base line and the giants used to be on first base and whenever Lasorda it's like that at Wrigley Field when I was growing up too. Oh really? Yeah. And so we used to sit there, and when Lasorda used to get kicked out of the games, he and Bobby Cox also used to. They would have to walk all the way down to the first base line, and there was the door that they went into the locker. So with Bobby Cox, who was the the, the coach of the Braves, we used to yell, "Cox sucker, Cox sucker," <laughs> you know, we, and then when the pitcher is doing bad, like he didn't get, like he didn't get that in high school. I know. Okay. You know, then, come on. All the time. And then, and the and the the warm up catcher for the pitchers when they were you know getting a relief, we would yell at him when the pitcher was sucking on on the game and say, "Hey, check the phone. Is the phone on? Check the phone for dial tone because we're waiting for the manager to call to start warming up." Well, I want to thank you. I, I, I want to thank you. I want to thank you guys for talking sports tonight because this gives me credit to hold on to my uh, uh, Emmy. Emmy, my sports Emmy for another year. <laughs> she'll she'll testify to it. You saw the sports Emmys, right? Totally. And the other Emmy that wasn't a sports Emmy. Yes. But it's the sports Emmy that is in contention that there are sports writers in San Francisco who still think I should turn it back in. <laughs> Whatever. You know, that it wasn't right. Hello there, Schmoody. How you doing tonight? We're talking sports Good. here. We're talking sports. What sport do you like? Uh, well, I played volleyball, basketball from junior high school, high mm -hmm. school, and college. I bet you play basketball because as a female, you're tall. Yes. Yeah. And volleyball, yeah. How tall are you? Yeah. I remember, I forget. Six foot? Six feet. Wow. Yep. Yeah. I'm six four, and I never went out with a tall girl like that. Yeah, I, I had one I, I gorgeous never... friend. She was six two, and that scared me. She was. I like... I was always attracted to smaller women. Yeah. And yeah. and so why I fell for this woman, I have no idea. You know. She was your bodyguard. <laughs> she, well, she served that function well, that's too. Well, obvious, Al. You know. Does anybody? No, just... you know what? I was meant to be in your life when I was meant to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. And and uh, but but uh, she was not what you would call my type. I didn't go for blondes nope. either. You know. Nope. So there's no counting for you know. Uh, uh, I mean, but there was something about her. She was she made me laugh. She's a funny lady, as you, as is evidenced by her appearances on this show. You know, uh, exceedingly funny. And 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 women who could make me laugh always turn me on. You know. And then on top of it, she just, you know, she, she, if somebody tried to attack me, she'd beat him up. Yeah. So, you know, she was, she, she you were kind of, you kind of a bodyguard. Well, you know, what was funny is when we were first hanging out, um, when people found out because nobody ever called me Kathleen except my family. So I said, yeah, refer to me as Kathleen. And I remember uh we were at tommy t's you were having a live show mm -hmm. and there were a bunch of san ramon ups drivers there so you do your thing and then at break you come to me and we talk and so by like the fourth time these drivers come up to me and go hey cat are you kathleen and i said <laughs> yes uh, shut up uh... Oh boy! Because I was very private. Yeah, you were very private about your relationship with me. Yeah. And if I were a woman, I wouldn't want anybody to know you were go they were going out with me either. You know. No, but you know, uh, what? Yeah. people would say, um, "Oh my God, how could you stand him? He's such an asshole." And I go, "Do you guys realize his job is, is to be an to asshole? <laughs> no, his job is to entertain, to provoke." I go. The person I know is nothing like him. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there is a, there's the personality you have on the air, and it's not that it's not oh, you; yeah. it's an extension of you. Yes. And then there's the the personality you have off the air, which you don't do because you've spent four hours in a day being that person. So right. when you get off, you want to get back to just you know melting into the into the woodwork. Just being yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so this was she was she was clearly not my type, and uh, I don't know how long did we go together. It had to be at least a year, a year and a half, something like that. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's uh, amazing, amazing. Hello, John Larkin. How are you? How's everything down there in the... Uh, in the, uh, uh, Got the, my San Francisco shirt on. The, uh, San, Francisco. San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. But uh, how, how's everything down there in the uh, tenderloin? Um, Tender. <laughs> yeah. We, <laughs> Well, you know, I I would like to think when I lived in San Francisco and in the Bay Area, the Tenderloin was the worst district in San Francisco, practically. I mean, uh, the worst district with white people in it. Okay, uh, and and uh, so you'd never go down there. But I figure that I've been gone from there for you know thirty years, forty years. That in that time it would have gentrified and everything would have been wonderful and terrific. And you say it still sucks. Well, they're trying to call it the mid-market area now. <laughs> the mid-market area? Yeah. Well, that sounds <laughs> better than tenderloin. Yeah, yeah, because tenderloin's got a bad rap, but so now they're calling it mid-market. Wow. But it's, 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 no, it's, isn't that the theater district? No. Yeah. Well, it is I kind guess. of, but Union Square, right off Union Square, is the theater district. But yeah. then you go further down, and that's the tenderloin. Yeah. yeah, but they have theaters on Market. They got the Orpheum, the yeah. Golden Gate, the Warfield. Well, that's yeah. on Market Street, and those didn't, yeah. believe it or not, those didn't used to be legitimate theaters. Those were movie theaters. Yeah. But they were made to do like six shows a day of live shows, and they would bring in people to do live shows, and then you'd go in, you'd see a movie, you'd see a companion feature, and then all of a sudden there'd be a little break, and then all of a sudden the curtains would part, and there was, you know, Spike Jones or whoever was doing the week there. My father used to play there quite often. But after um, uh, the movie, these big movie palaces kind of <clears throat> closed down, they converted to being legit theaters because it was very easy. They, they had all the things they needed to put on a full show. So uh, you then, but the Kern and uh, the, uh, what's the other, Geary were the two yeah. theaters that were doing uh, 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 theater there at the time. Uh, and uh, the Geary Theater was, was legitimate, were plays, and the Curran Theater were musicals. Uh, and the reason was you needed two different kinds of theaters for each, each kind of, of thing. But that, I don't know if anybody really who's listening to us cares about what I'm saying right now. Well, but, uh, didn't we see Springtime for Hitler at the Koran Theater? No, we saw that at the Orpheum. No. Orpheum. Yep, we saw it at the Orpheum. Yeah. I mean uh, the producers? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The producers. Yeah, with, yeah, and we saw it with um, Jason Alexander and Martin Short. Yeah. No, did we? Yes, and it was no. there was their like their trial run before they went to LA. I uh, maybe you're right. I seem to remember it as somebody else. I'm trying to remember Damn who it was. Right. Yes. Jason Alexander did do Thank it there. You. Yeah, I know he did do it. I mean, you may be yes. you know, maybe absolutely it was Jason right. Jason Alexander. Well, I mean, you wouldn't be you wouldn't be saying that unless it was true. You know. And, and who has the best memory? Come on. Yeah. Just Thank you. I trust Kathleen. <laughs> you trust Kathleen's memory over mine, do you? Sorry. <laughs> well, she did think. She did think that uh, that uh, uh, Howard Stern and I had an interaction while I was in San Francisco, and I never did. I yeah, never did. I never. I never met Howard until he walked mm -hmm. into my studio at Sirius XM many, many years later. Yeah. And, and he, he didn't come in to apologize either. You know. Um, you know. Howard Stern never worked. Wig with on. Well, what? Stern never worked in San Francisco, did he? No, no. no. I mean, he was on in San Francisco, but he wasn't. Uh, yeah. He didn't work out in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. No. But, so how could you have ever met him in San Francisco? He never worked here. Well, she thought that somehow I was had some dealing with him prior 
to me yeah. going to New York, but no, I never you had know, any dealing you, with it. You know uh, what I read today? You remember, remember that famous uh, Saturday Night Live skit with uh, Richard Pryor and, uh, and Chevy Chase? Where um, he goes, they do the word association. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was written by, uh, that was written by Paul Mo Mooney. I'm I'm sure it was. Yeah, that's the kind of thing he. Uh, honk it, honk it. That's a yeah. Honk it, honk it, honk it. Dead honk. Dead honk it. Well, he also wrote. He also wrote. You know, when when uh, there was a time when uh, Richard Pryor had a short-lived television show, and he yeah. wrote for that. One of the pieces he wrote was the the first black American president. And uh, he's holding a press conference, oh, yeah. and people are asking questions. And then one of them gets up and says, I have a question. He says, about what? He says, about your mother. <laughs> and immediately, Pryor has this posture of, what about my mother? Mm -hmm. You know. And it was some rude question the guy finally asked, and then they started to beat each other up. But I, that was so Paul Mo Mooney, you know, mm -hmm. that particular routine. You know what's interesting to me? People die, and you think, okay, I'm the only one that cares. All right? Paul Mooney. I knew the guy. He did some really proper things for me, uh, uh, things I really appreciated. Uh, and, uh, and, and so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sad he's gone. Uh, but I didn't think I'd turn on the CBS Evening News and they'd do a two-minute segment on Paul Mooney. Wow. And on Paul Mooney dying. So apparently, sometimes people have this influence that you that isn't perceptible, but when they die, everybody goes, "Oh, guess who died? Paul Mooney!" And all of a sudden, the people at CBS are going, "We got to do a piece on Paul Mooney." They are planning on uh, giving a lifetime award or something to him, posthumously in Oakland because that's where he oh, lived, yeah. Yeah. you know, and. I didn't think that would be the reaction to the death of Paul Mooney. I thought the reaction to the death of Paul Mooney would be that I'd have to get on here and explain who the hell the guy was. But everybody oh knows who he was here. Yeah. But how, how is like CBS going to attribute anything to him when his, his, his comedy he couldn't have on, on TV? Yeah. I mean, maybe some skits and stuff like that, but his true comedy, you know, stand-up stuff? Yeah. He was a writer, though. He was a writer. Really. Yeah. He, he was a writer, but he was also a comedian, and he was an actor. He was in movies. Uh, yeah. Um, but uh, he, and he, and he was terrific. But I just didn't think he would have that kind of impact that, you know, the newscast would stop and say, hey, Paul Mooney died today. And yeah. then they'd show some, a little clip of Paul Mooney, Mooney doing something. Uh, and uh, I, I was really, uh, I was very happy with it, but I was amazed. And sometimes that happens. Certain people die, and all of a sudden, there's all this kind of stuff about them having died. And you go, I didn't realize the rest of the world was as hip to this guy as I was. He was a regular on the Dave Chappelle show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> but he, he had a... What's a, there's a style he had that was very close to the vest. You know, it was very subtle. Yeah. He, he, he was, was not very much a straight man. It, well, no, he wasn't. He wasn't an over-the-top comedian, no. and his stuff was incredibly relevant. I mean, he would piss a lot of white people off. It was, and, and it was almost like you know, I say truthful, but it was like he's almost like telling stories and then getting totally. that feedback from the audience. And him saying no, yes. that's you know that's how it is. I, I I listened. I have like five or six stations pre-programmed on satellite with the, all the comedy ones. But I see the screen, so I can see when the comics pop up. And so I hit him a couple times. It came up, and it's hysterical this stuff. Paul yes. Mooney was terrific. He was just terrific. I mean, he was he was one of my favorite comics, and 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 one of my favorite people. I mean, he was just, and he and I got along over the years. He would appear on my show in San Francisco. I, I, he shouldn't have gotten along with me because I was a white Jewish guy. But we got along perfectly. I understood him. He understood me. Uh, and uh, he, was, he was terrific. He was just terrific. But as I say, it's amazing. that uh, Somebody went a while back and I said the same thing. Who would have thought that when he died there would be this much news about him? 
Uh, so uh, you never know what's like when I die. Maybe the whole they'll stop a whole do a whole segment on me on CBS, right? And everybody will go, "Who the fuck was he?" But anyway, you know, I'm not just a has been. I'm a never was. Okay, so let's make that perfectly clear. Now, how, how many comedians is, people are going to be at your funeral? That's, that's going to be a lot of people there. I don't think anybody. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think anybody's going to show up at my funeral. I don't oh, know of anybody that would. Oh, Shecky yeah, would show really up. Funny. Shecky would show up. Tony, if he could get himself out of Queens, might come to the to the yeah, funeral. I would go. If it's, You'd yeah, go. I would okay, go so I, I'll t I'll save two seats for you and Shecky. Yeah, I would. And he probably that. won't go because I don't want to go where Tony's going. So you know, I don't blame you on that. <laughs> and Tony will supply the holy water. See, that's great. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. plenty. I found palm in her sock drawer today. You palm <laughs> in her sock. <laughs> you want me to get it? This thing. No, no, you where, don't have don't to get she it. Saved everything, Alex. It's amazing. You should have. You should have put her on hoarders. I mean, hold on. You want me to get it? You don't want it. It's kind of yellowy. It's got to be real old. Have you gone through all it's her stuff? Wrapped, like it's wrapped. It must have like a where did she, or where did she get the wait a minute? Where did she get it from? She must have took it from the church and she sticks. I'm going through a drawer because I gave some stuff to the church and I threw some stuff out and I found pollen in the sock drawer. She must have forgot about it because who keeps it there? Well, maybe maybe the I palms. Said, the, I, I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to tell Check. I'm going to buy a Ouija board and try to talk to her by his house. <laughs> I wonder if there's money in the house. She she never really had anything, but you never know. I'm waiting to find something. Right, you're looking for it, aren't you? I'm, I mean, she doesn't. You're know. looking for I'm, it, aren't I'm, you? I'm looking for those pennies she rolled from Mohegan Sun. I was like, yeah. so what the hell is this? She's on, she was very religious, but she never went to church half the time. She was religious at home. Well, people can be, you know, I don't think you yeah, have to go. Good. I don't think you have to go to church to be religious. No, that's what she said. She says you don't have to go to church. You know, you you uh, you know you can you, you can pray anywhere, you know, and. Uh, hey Tony, you put you saw what I put up on my page. Yes, that's what made me think of my mother because, you know, I tell you the truth. I was what did you about, wait a minute? Hold on a second. What did you put up on your page, Smoody? I was in. What did you put up? Oh, tonight. No, Smoody. What did she no, put me. up? me. Yeah. Oh, you'll have to go to my page and look. Oh God. Oh, God. Are you under Kathleen or are you under Schmoody? Oh, yeah, <laughs> But you know, I was thinking, though, Alex, so like she said, you don't have to go to church. My mother was never really, even though we went to after religious and started after school, she didn't care really about that. She's like, just go and get it over with. I used to hate it. They used to hate, yeah. hate me there because I used to ask them a thousand questions. All right, get it. And this is the time my mother, he asks too many questions. He, quit. he raises too many things. He should just listen more. By the way, you know, the reason, we, like the reason we have Tony on is because we want you all to know what goes on in Queens. <laughs> you know? And, and uh, am I right, Jeff? Well, I grew up this this is Queens her. personified, oh, isn't it? It's, a, it's an unusual world, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey Alex. Think about it. Alex, yeah. if you go to my Facebook page, keep scrolling down and keep reading. You'll be surprised. It's about Tony. It's about Tony? Wait a minute. Yeah. Hold on a second. What do, what do I do? I go to I go to Facebook. I go to Facebook and then I put in uh, Kathleen. Kathleen. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, there she is, right at the top. Here, here comes Kathleen. Let's see. We don't want to give him a heart attack. I, I went to Bible study for about three years at this church up the street. Okay, is that one of them? No, yeah, that's, that's one of them. <laughs> okay. And then there's another one here from Tony Magno. Do this. Say that. I would say Oh, yeah, they no. were telling me what to do in church, Alex. Yeah. yeah. She used to snap her yeah. fingers. Oh, there's a whole thing here on, on the whole little thing you guys did. I on, have a good memory of what happened. On religion. I remember Sister Urban was her name. She used to always snap her fingers. Do this, say that. She says, no, I'm not saying that. I got to do this, say that. They, they were all, they had hang-ups, I think. They well, used to get, she well, used to tell my mother. I went to confession. You know, I got scared. I've to told that you story. Go in there. It's dark in there. I told him, I want to go He didn't even hear what I said. You said you went to confession. I went to confession. You're Jewish. How did you go to You home? did? How would you get in? They let you, you probably could have snuck in. Hey, they listen, you anybody, your car, your here's, you know, I tell, I've told the story before. What happened was, that it, what happened was on Saturdays, you used to go to a movie. 
okay? Uh -huh. We would go to a movie. Um, and uh, the movie theater was the Palace Theater. They would show the movie, and they would show, like, you know, cartoons and the serial and the, and the western or something like that. And then the rest of the week, the kids would all play out the movie that they had seen that week, okay? Well, all of a sudden, I'm going to the movie, and there's nobody else there. And I'm going, what happened to all these people? And it turned out that the local church, St. Peter and St. Paul, decided that they were going to start showing movies on Saturday and, and literally get all these kids to come to the movies. And the way they could go to the movie was by going to confession. And after they gave confession, they were given a ticket to the oh movie. So I said kind of to one, like I said to one of my friends, I said, how do I go to this movie? They said, you got to go to confession. How do mm -hmm. I do that? You go in, you sit down, you say, forgive me, Father, for I yeah. have sinned. And then you tell them what you did wrong that week. And then you walk out and they give you a ticket. So I, you, you know, I did this every week. I would go in and I would confess. I don't know. I, I, I played with somebody else's toys or something. What is a kid going to confess to, you know? What did I do? I try to think kids, I kids have nothing to confess to. So uh, uh, they would give it to me, and then I would go to the movie. Well, uh, on one day, I'm walking down the street with my mother, and uh, we walk past St. Peter and St. Paul's, and who should we bump into but Father Larry? Oh and Father God. Larry was the priest who gave me confession every week. <laughs> and he said, oh, it, 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 you must be Bennett's mother. And she went, yes. He said, I want to tell you what, what a lovely boy he is. Oh, my God. What the fuck? And now, you would, think, you would think perhaps they would, he would, that would be followed up with, yes, I fucked him several times. But no, that wasn't... <laughs> That, that wasn't what, what he said. He said, such a nice boy. He comes to confession every week. Oh, Your mother oh. like, what is going on here? What's going, we'll talk about this later. And my mother smiles and says, well, that's very nice. Thank you, Father Larry. And we start walking on, and as we get around the corner, she oh, hits me damn. in the back of the head <laughs> and keeps saying, don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. I didn't want to do it, and I was going. My mother did. You know, I wanted to go to the goddamn movie. I said, "Mom, I gotta go to the movie. How am I gonna go?" To you're not going to confession ever again. <laughs> Just make like you're interested. You know, uh, no so, more movies. Yeah. Yes. Well, at least you got a movie out of this. Well, they made us go to confession. We didn't get anything out of it. Oh, really? Uh, oh, I really? had to say the stupid. That's I didn't awesome. even say the prayers when I got out of there. I used to sit down and just do nothing. Really? Yeah. Okay. You just kneel down, just make You sit there for like a minute or two, and then you just get up. Yeah. I only got a lifetime of <laughs> mental illness. A lifetime of <laughs> mental illness. I had a lifetime of the wallpaper and drapes, and my mother haunting me. So, in other words, <laughs> in other words, we're saying that at least what three people here, me being one of them, all went to yeah, confession. Yeah. Anybody else yeah. go to confession? I used to lie in confession. Oh, you went to yeah, confession, yeah, John? I didn't do anything. Right. I had to lie about it. I went all the time. Yeah, I mean, you're yeah. a kid. What are you gonna What Brave are you gonna say? Body. Yeah, I used to say I lied to my mom. I used to make shit up. Really? And then you had to say, you always had to say, it's been such and such long oh, since yeah. my last confession. It's like, shit, I don't know how long it's been. It's been uh, three days since my last confession. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, it was always seven days since my last confession because I wanted to go to the fucking movie. <laughs> That's why Ray's yeah. such a great actor. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the Catholic Church taught me everything I know. <laughs> about acting. That's awesome. <laughs> that's why. That's why I've played many pedophiles in my career. <laughs> so listen, I got. I got to tell you that you all got. I, I'm getting a little pissed with this whole thing with the uh, vaccination. Alice, you see what they're doing? They well, wait a minute. Let me, let me, that's what I'm going to talk about. So don't spoil it, Tony. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't spoil Tony's it. so smart. Don't, don't jump in and oh, ruin Tony. my story. So <laughs> uh, I'm mad because if I just waited, I could have get, gotten in on lotteries. And as you know, Ohio has a lottery going. Really? Yes, they have a lottery, and it's a thousand, a million dollars a day or something for a week yeah. or something, for people who get their vaccinations. If you get vaccinated, you're entered into the lottery. 
I'm going, hey, I went and got mine early. Nobody had a lottery back. Can I do the lottery retroactively, you know? No. So, so our governor here in New York is a combination competitor and cheapskate. Okay? So he announces today, get a shot, get a chance at winning $5 million. I heard that. Again. And I'm going, he's trying to beat out Ohio, right? <laughs> then he explains it. Everybody that gets a shot gets a lottery ticket. A scratch. Oh, <laughs> I was so I was like, <laughs> and the top prize on the scratcher, which is a $20 ticket, by the way, is a $5 million. But you have a one in seven chance of winning $20. You know what I told my brother? I got a better chance of getting COVID out. So I'm thinking to myself, what a cheapskate. I mean, he's not even taking yeah. money out of the coffers of the, of, the, yeah. of the state and saying, $5 million, we're going to give it away to one person who goes and gets a shot, you know? And, and that would probably, I'm, I wonder if it's going to help. I, I don't think so. Not for a cheap know. lottery trick. It we got to bribe them to take the vaccine. It's well, crazy. it says vax and what was what was the term he used? Uh, you know, in San Francisco, it'd be like get your vaccine and we'll give you a life supply of Ritzarona. <laughs> yeah, really? San Francisco treat. <laughs> oh, I love Ritzarona. <laughs> I buy Norris too now, but it cooks in seven minutes. Yeah, you're not, it you're cooks, not having a problem in San Francisco. What? What were you over, saying? What are you saying? Seventy percent of the population. Turn up your mic a little bit there. Uh, oh, that's yeah. new. Really? Yeah, over seventy percent. Yeah, really. <laughs> that's new. Is that better? A little better, yeah. I was closer to it. So anyhow, um, yeah, in San Francisco, they don't need to give anything away. They're like over seventy percent are fully vaccinated. What the hell? In Where? The in in San Francisco? In the city of San Francisco. Yes. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. We're, I think Connecticut I think, is about that number. Oh, I think it's larger in Connecticut. Uh, and it's it's getting there here in New York City as well. And we only had 17 deaths in New York State yesterday. So mm -hmm. that's getting better. And, so you wanted to get in on the lotto, huh, Alex? I, see. Well, I want, why can't I get why can't I get on the lottery retroactively? Right. I mean, come on. I was Why there early. I waited in line for two hours to you get did mine. Wait, I remember. Huh? <laughs> you waited in line that time. I remember. Yeah, it was two hours. Now you got to wait three minutes. Yeah. Well, now you can get it anywhere. To get that twenty-dollar lotto ticket, you probably would have spent fifty dollars in batteries on your thermometer. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Damn it. So anyway, so I'm I'm all pissed that I you know that I did that. I, I don't I don't feel right. Uh, and I, nobody I, likes it when Alex is pissed. That is so it, scary. You don't want me to be pissed? No, absolutely not. I thought that was the part between the seven thirty guest and when he comes on to us that three or four minutes that he talks how bad he feels, how nothing's working out. <laughs> yeah, I uh you, I, <laughs> I should talk about your, more. Your, monolo your monologues are actually pretty good, Alex. And the technical issues. Oh, that's my. Oh favorite. yeah, that's funny too. <laughs> yeah. Well, it seems it's funny. You know, when I have technical issues on this program, the numbers go up incredibly, because people like to see me yeah. fail. <laughs> and I figure if I get a good bad problem, some night, it's actually going to be very good for the show. You know? It'll probably happen on Tuesday night. Huh? It'll probably happen on Tuesday night like it did this last Tuesday. No, really? No. YouTube I, yeah. shut down because Phil was going to be on. Actually, I got uh, I got that whole problem seems to be fixed. Knock on wood. You know? Right on. Yeah, uh, because I put everything on a different USB port and just put two things in there, the cameras. You know? You and were right. You were you right. I mean, back in the day, I remember Alex working on his computers but he's got these massive hands. And Ma you'd be inside the... Um, massive hands? I have massive yeah. hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. You do. And then you'd well, that's a that's a clue to other that that's a clue to other, that's a clue to other things. Right? Yeah. You have a massive <coughs> hand. No, big hands, glove. big heart. No, big glove. I no think just hands. Me, I think <laughs> just hands. Just hands. I think what Kathleen's trying to say is you got big hands and big feet, 
You got big gloves and big shoes. Yeah. Yeah. You have some Milton Burrow hands. Milton Burrow hands. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, uh, uh, no, but um, what's, what were you saying? I, I used to have my hands in equipment and stuff and was fixing stuff. And it... Oh, yeah, but boy, I tell you, your cursory, you'd be so effing pissed. About what? About things going bad? Yo, Totally. Oh yeah, well I took it personally. It's well, I felt the, the technology hated me. Mm. Yes. You know, and I had to get even with it. Uh, so how's everything at work, uh, 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 Brian? Good. <clears throat> Good. Good. Yeah, we're just trying to expand too much, too quick. But the our our um, our VP, well actually President of Operations, talked today, and he understands that. So. It's just going crazy. We're just trying to get China going right now. China and uh, India is on pause right now. We're going to do some other stuff over there. And, um, yeah, it's just crazy. A lot of stuff well, you know on. what I he heard about China tonight from Marjorie? Because she has, you know, she works for the Chinese. And a lot of the people who uh, she works with travel over to China and everything like that. You can't travel to China unless you've been vaccinated. Mm, now, you'd say you think that's pretty simple. I'll just show them my little passport, you know, mm. and uh, that'll be okay. No, you have to be vaccinated by them. Oh, really? It has to be their vaccine. They won't... A chink, a chink vax? Huh? As Tony would say? A chink vax? Yeah, well, with... Uh, Tony would oh, say? With two, you get an egg roll. Um... <laughs> But, no, they won't let the people, uh, so you have to come to the country, they give you their vaccination, uh, and then you have to stay at a hotel for two weeks. You have to, uh, oh, wow. yeah, you yeah. can't, yeah. So, I mean, it's impossible for people to co go from the United States to China, just even on a vacation. I mean, somehow, I mean, let's face it, this is working for us, okay? So, give us a little bit of a break. But now we're yeah. finding out we may have to get a booster at six months. Yeah, yeah. We, we had to do, for India to fire up some sub-assembly stuff, we had to do videos and everything to send to them, and they did really mm -hmm. good. And then we have our local plant, mm -hmm. the one over in the East Bay, and those guys are like, we're there, and they can't figure it out. But India's doing really good. Now China, we have videos for them, but we have to have everything translated for them. So yeah, so it's it's uh, it's very challenging, but it's keeping me really busy. The trouble with India is they've got enough vaccine because we've sent them over a ton of it, but they can't get it into arms. They're having yeah, trouble they vaccinating. Northern, northern, yeah, northern um, um, India is doing much better now, but the southern part is really bad still. Yeah, and the southern part is the big cities, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so they're still having a hard time. So, have, you, have you ever? Yeah. Have then, you, then we have our local, the local ones. We just got keys for another building in uh, Newark over near Fremont. Mm -hmm. And then we have our first plant that's uh, fired up a couple lines. Uh, we got uh, approval. Uh, yeah, so it's it's going good. Are you uh, are you going to go in the east at all? East coast. Uh, yes, I will be stopping east coast when I make other trips for sure. No, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying to get a trip maybe in a couple months with the wife. In case so. people don't know, um, uh, Brian's <clears throat> company makes these things, and these are testing. Test. Yeah, they're they're test kits, cartridges for. Yeah. We do everything from GBS strep for pregnant women to uh, MTB with Bill and Melinda Gates, or is that Bill or Melinda Gates? Let's just say. <laughs> and, no, it's Bill. Bill and or Melinda Gates. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for Africa and uh, and then we do yeah everything for flu normal flu stuff respiratory disease during the normal seasons mm -hmm. and then when COVID hit we just exploded so we're like do you, uh, do, you, do you make Schwabs do you make Schwabs <laughs> <laughs> so I was Every we were the company that 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 uh, Trump couldn't pronounce. He couldn't pronounce our name, so he said Abbott Labs and Saf Saf Safayid. <laughs> what, what, what is, what, I printed that up on my wall. It's so funny. Well, what's the name of your company? Because it's not on Sefied. here. Call Safayid. Oh, because Safayid. There it is. Why. It's at the bottom. It's at the very bottom. Here's, here's, a, here's a picture of it, Alex. This is what it looks like when you put up one of his little. It's got one of these. One of these little. I know you got a test yet, but it looks like. 
you're standing there going, and how the hell do we read it? It could be a, a, a sample box of condoms for all we know. Well, wait a minute, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I'm going to do That's the... That's why I only say Schwab's. Right, right. Uh, oh wait a minute! You, you have this. Uh, these. Uh, oh, there we, we go. We get we get Schwabs from Italy. Everybody Schwabs. does. Really? Oh, yeah. okay. India and China. So, but we had we had a shortage of Schwabs. This thing. My came. phone is. They reading. were made by my friend Charles Schwabs. <laughs> my phone isn't reading the QR code. Maybe, uh -huh. or isn't it supposed to? No, oh, I heard China it's once. A, yeah, it's a 2D barcode special. Oh, it's, it's a, oh, I see. It's not meant. It's not meant for me to read what. what no, we we're the guys who started our company are pretty genius. So instead of um, a software going by the cartridge, we actually have each cartridge has its own identifier. So they we can have one big system and we can run MTB, we can run GBS, we can run Flu, different assays at the yeah. same machine. All we do is barcode it, so it goes by that assay instead of right. usually like Abbott Labs. They say I'm gonna run flu. Do you know there's not one person listening to us who knows what you're talking about? I there's do. 50 people now. Look at the numbers. They're, they're skyrocketing. <laughs> yeah, the sorry you don't understand this stuff, Alex. What? What? Well, I mean, it's just all initials. You know, everything's initials today. All, all diseases are initials. Oh, yeah. I have IBS. Yeah. Oh, well, very good for you. Tuberculosis. Yeah. yeah. Great American uh, broadcast. Gab. Yeah, everything's initials. Uh, uh, I have ED. Because you don't want to okay. say erectile dysfunction. <laughs> oh. <laughs> extra dick. Extra dick, yeah. And ET has extra testicles. Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. Do you consider your, your uh, competitor to BD? Uh, yeah, BD is a competitor, but we also get some parts from them. We also who get the little fuck is BD? More initials. Beck, Beck and Dickinson. Dickinson. Come on, yeah, really? Come on, Alex. Who? Yeah, Beck and Dickinson. Beck yeah, and Dickinson. Very big. How about how about KFC? Yeah. Do you get do you get some equipment from KFC? No, I get my Schwabs from KFC. <laughs> I think Ray's trying out for some parts, I guess. Yeah, he's he's trying a little shtick. He's uh, I don't know. What the hell. Job, I'm sorry. Ray. Hey, Ray, are you getting? Are you? Is there like some work like rumors going around for acting or anything? Just on Broadway, everybody, nobody else is opening up. Yeah. And he's here, and not on Broadway. Yeah, I know I'm not on Broadway because I don't live in the right place. Yeah, yeah. So, unfortunately. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Do you do, do, do you do musicals? <laughs> yeah, I've done tons of musicals. Really? Not yeah. watching them, Ray. Actually, being in them. Yeah, yeah being in them. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you the, I love musicals. Are you the only straight guy in the musical? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, you know how there's, there's this big thing with Black Lives Matter and stuff, which I think is fine, but like there's so many other people that in theater that are uh, prejudiced against, you know, like straight men. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> straight yeah. older men. You know, but just tell well, you know, when I when I, when I was first starting out, I, I wanted to be an actor as opposed to anything else. That was what I, my career path was. Uh, and I only went into radio because I figured if I got into radio, maybe I got somewhat successful. People would ask me to act, and that never uh, happened. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, but uh, uh, I had a few times that I was oh, almost did stuff, but you know. But I always want to be there, an we'll actor. Do an off Broadway show starring Alex Bennett. No, so I went and I did. Uh, I, I I auditioned for plays in San Francisco, and I got a few. And I, you know, I had this one director who really liked me, uh, and then he found out that I was, uh, that yeah. I wasn't gay, but he didn't hold that against me. You know, he in fact thought that yeah. was great that I was doing this in, in what was essentially a very gay environment at the time. And, oh, yeah. and I didn't see, and I didn't seem to care, you know. But I just yeah. had to tell him, hey, you know, I, I'm I'm straight, so you know, you'd be wasting your time coming on to me. Uh, and yeah, he yeah. Pre he appreciated that, you know. What where, where yeah, did you do? You do you remember? Hmm? Emmy. However, yeah, you wanted an Emmy though, yeah. Yeah, I will. I will tell you something. Though. I did a show over at Channel Twenty. 
in San Francisco, oh, which was why? at that time owned by Jim Gabbard. <laughs> uh, and and Jim was Jim great. Gabbard Jim was a great yeah. guy. I enjoyed Jim, but he was great. I I Very did this nice. thing called Captain uh, UHF or something, and I we I wore this propeller uh, helmet, and I would uh, <laughs> where they put me in a space kind of situation, and I would introduce the movies. And I had a puppet, Mister Rabbit, and I did things like that, right? So now I do this <laughs> show. I do this show. I'm doing it for a couple of weeks. And all of a sudden, um, I mentioned something to somebody about my girlfriend. And all of a sudden, the rumors all over the station were, he's straight. Because Jim was gay. Yeah, and yeah. everybody at that station was gay. Except yeah. for Captain UHF. Right? And when it got around that I was straight. Letters again. What? Yeah. Captain UHF, another one. When I letter. got out that I was straight, mm -hmm. two well. weeks later, I didn't have a show anymore. Oh. Yeah. So, you know. No, no I was a breeder, apparently, and that was not acceptable. Huh? And didn't Jim Gabbert have a 737 that he used to fly around? A, a I don't, I don't think he had a 737, no. He, he was, oh, I thought he did. He was quite okay. wealthy, but he didn't have a 737. No. He had a very nice boat. He had a very nice boat he lived on, and yeah. he used to invite us over to the boat. Did you ever go with me on that boat, yes. Kathleen? Yeah. Uh, he would invite us over on the boat, and we would, uh, we would, uh, you know. I think this was long after I was Captain UHF, too. He was still yeah. very nice to me. It's just that... Yes, he uh, was very nice, it's and okay, he was Kathleen. very down to earth. The, the people, uh, he had a dog. i got to tell you the story about this dog. He, he had this dog. And, and I had this puppet, Mr. Rabbit. It was just a stupid rabbit puppet I had found somewhere, and I was just, you know, Mr. Rabbit got really nasty with me, you know, and he was a nasty, vile puppet, right? And so I'm doing the show, and then we take a break. And his dog had run of the entire television station. I mean, if you were doing a newscast, and the dog walked into the studio, you did not change, chase the dog out of the studio. The dog was like the most valued employee of Channel 20. So the dog comes in while I'm doing my show, and he grabs my puppet, <laughs> puts it in his mouth, and starts walking away. And I say, come back here and give me my goddamn puppet back. And the dog goes kind of gives me the doggy finger you know mm -hmm. and he walks he's walking around like he owns the place which he does actually and uh i will go over and i take mr rabbit and i try to pull it out of his mouth and now he's going Grr, oh, right boy. and i'm trying to pull it i'm going give it give me the rabbit you son of a bitch and oh, everybody's man. going be nice to the dog i said he's got my puppet you had you couldn't do anything bad about this dog. You couldn't say oh, bad things nothing. about him. You couldn't yell at him. But he, he was a spoiled little brat, is what he was. You know. So. Did did James Gabbard own Channel Twenty? Yes. In San Francisco. That's, that's what I'm now saying. Yeah. Now I know who yeah. he is. Yeah. <clears throat> he was a great guy. He was a great guy. He was a very nice man. You know. A buddy of mine that was a San Francisco cop was working undercover in some kind of something in the porn industry like 25 30 years ago or mm -hmm. something like that and they caught james gabbett on his knees or something like that doing whatever i forget oral sex to another guy or something he was arrested yeah today today cool. today be able to be mayor of san francisco but you that's know. right <laughs> he'd be yeah. applauded i i was on the channel once we i did i was in a dinner theater thing like what we just lost some years ago. Oh, oh, that's it. That's interesting, Ray. Ray. Mm. Ray. 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 He, mm. he, we're he losing. It. He went, walked into. Oh, there he is. He's now. Now yeah. you're okay. Tell us again, Ray, because we didn't hear. Oh, you. I was. Oh, I was just. I was just wanted to say I was on Channel Twenty once, like thirty-five years ago. I was doing this dinner theater thing, and they did a promotion. It was kind of. It was so cheesy, and mm. his, his. He was so. His, everything he did was so. <laughs> Cheesy, you know, but funny. I don't know. It's just unique. The, uh, yeah, but he dance. tried. He, what were you going to say, John? Remember the dance show? The you dance know? show. That was he, hilarious. He, yes, he had a dance show. I heard yeah, John was in one. He was a dancer. 
And the yeah. weirdest people are on there all the time. TV20 dance party. Right. That was awesome. Right. I love that. I, I went on and that show. they did show. the high schools, too. They did the high schools, too. Yeah. I can't get that channel anymore on, on YouTube. How do you get that channel? I don't yeah. know. I, I don't know what it's become. You, I think you need the, an antenna. I, 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 I'm, I'm, probably, I'm probably right when I say this. Jim is dead, right? Yes, I can he is. Yeah, Alex. he does. He was smart. He Who? went to Stanford University. Who? It's James Gabbard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's a br- wow. very bright Studied guy. Studied electrical engineering. Very bright guy. Yeah, he, he made millions. He made a, many millions. He made many millions. He he started a radio station, and it became very successful. And he sold it for millions upon millions of dollars. And then he took those millions and bought a TV station, bought a UHF station, Channel Twenty. And uh, he was running that station for many, many years. Yep. Um, and he was just, uh, he was just, a, uh, he, he was a highlight of San Francisco broadcasting. Is he what can I say? No, he's still alive, Alex. He's still alive? What? They said he lives in Sausalito. Really? Uh, oh, well, then I guess I... he wasn't gay. Uh, <laughs> 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 you know, Wikipedia has him alive still. Really? Yeah. <laughs> How old is he? I don't know. He was born in 36. Wow. Oh, he's that's up. old. So he's 84. Wow. Son of a bitch. Well, good for Jim. Jim? Why don't you give him a call, you, Alex? You can get him on. That would be get good. on the show. Give me a, a call. You might not want to call. I'm still not gay. But, uh, you know. You should tell him you want now. You can play a trick on him. Yeah. He'll never see you physically, so just tell him you're gay now. Well, I, uh, you know, one time I had somebody yeah, call me. A, a he's smart. Oh, I always hated it when people went to me and said, uh, what, are you gay or something? And uh, my answer, I, they would do it on the radio. They go, what, are you gay or something? I went, yeah, what, what is it to you? And that would always stop them. Yeah. You know, because I always felt it was, because I grew up, I tell people that I grew up gay. Because my father was a musician and he used to take me to the ballet and everybody thought that because my father didn't take me to baseball games and I went to the ballet, I must be a, a fairy, a as of, they call it. I think you have a lot better culture by not going to a baseball game. Yeah, well, anyway, they they used to say, are you gay or something? You know, so I grew up, everybody thought I was gay. They always accused me of being gay. It's okay, we still do. You know, and there... what. <laughs> There wasn't a, there wasn't a gay gene in me. Wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. Um, <laughs> Just once there was a gay gene in you, but that was many years ago. Yeah, his, <laughs> uh, his name was his name was Gene, as a matter of fact. And uh, no, but I, you know, I uh, 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 so when I grew up, uh, this whole notion of, of being gay didn't didn't hit me as anything bad. Plus, I was in the theater. I knew a lot of gay people. And I was, uh, you know, I, there were a lot of gay people associated with my life. So I never felt uh, any kind of feeling that, uh, you know, I had to, That's especially right. that I had to defend myself, right. you know, about that. So when somebody would say, are you gay, gay or something? i go, yeah, I am. What of it? Yeah, I'm very happy. Thank you. I think his station is gone. I think they took it off, took it down. I, I have an t- antenna, and it's not here. Coffee. K O F Y. Yeah, yeah, it's gone. It's gone. I think. Yeah. No, it's now moved to twenty one, Ray. No, oh, it has. Oh. No, I'm no. Kidding. I, I got to tell you. I got to tell you. TV stations don't disappear. Hold it on. Yep. Yeah. Channel twenty. Twenty. Coffee. Still on. San Francisco. Oh, okay. Still on. San Francisco. I'm looking. I have an antenna. I'm looking here. It's not listed. What, what, what happened here? I didn't want that. When it's um, it's on cable seven thirteen. Mm. Oh, maybe yeah, I'm just not getting. Right. Wait a minute. What's this? Oh, okay. Now I, I, I'm all Coffee ready. is on seven thirty. Okay, but it says. Yeah. No, I believe you. I mean, maybe I'm having trouble getting it. Seven thirteen. Mm. Hmm. Oh, it's a WB affiliate. That's yeah. right, WB. Yeah. That's yeah. how it's listed uh, on here. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Uh, yeah. But uh, so Jim Gabbard's still alive. Channel Twenty is still on the air. Well, we've accomplished a lot tonight, folks. And we didn't even talk about the president. <laughs> and we have 36 people watching this. So, you know, mm-hmm. life's good. What can we do to get this up to 100 people? What about your sexual oohs and ahs on the weekend? Well, no, but that would be on the audio thing. I'm talking about oh. something here that I could yeah, do. I, I'll bet you a we lot could... more people listen to you on the radio than do live like this. 
I think we I, could each have our our significant significant others come out and do sexy dances. Sexy dances. <laughs> yeah. You do the or sexy. Or Brian could just have his wife. We'll we'll, we'll have we'll have Schmooty do her sexy <laughs> dance. And Schmooty can do some <laughs> sexy dances. <laughs> No, 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 no. How many okay. people? How many people watch your your walks in the park, Alex? Uh, More than watch uh, oh, the show. No, actually, I maybe get. Oh, today I had like uh, the other day I had like fifteen were watching at one time. Yeah, but what, oh, okay. Yeah. I look at it after the fact. Yeah. Yeah, some people do that. You know. Yeah, I think that. I think it's interesting. You know, uh, but they like to watch me when I'm. You know, after I've done what I've done, and also watch me after I've failed. But what, anyway. what if you get what if you get lottery ticket, dollar lottery tickets, and every time you have a guest, you give them a lottery ticket? There you go. You know, I I could say that. <laughs> you know, somebody tomorrow on this program is going to win, win five million dollars. <laughs> has a chance to win five million dollars. <laughs> you there get, you go. You, has you a chance. Hundreds of people. A chance to win five million dollars. Of course, there you go. the Results chance of winning typical. that five million dollars is next near to impossible. But you know, I'll go out and buy twenty or, or five twenty dollar lotto tickets of scratchers mm -hmm. here in California and send them to you, Alex. That we what I'll do, what I'll do is I'll buy one of these lottery tickets. Absolutely. And then while I'll, I'll announce, watch our show, to win, a, win a chance to win five million dollars. Yeah. And then, when somebody, we do the show, I will pick one person out of the 10,000 who will then hopefully be watching who gets the lottery ticket. Yeah. And then, and then you're willing to split it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, just, I'm yeah. wondering what you're going to do with the money, just Jeff. Just in case. Jeff, what are you going to do with the money? <laughs> So win, watch and have a chance to win $5 million, and then the, one of the people watching, maybe I'll give it to, to Brian uh, or, or Charlie. I'll, get, I'll give Charlie the, the lottery show. ticket, you know. It has to be live. They have to come on the show live. Well, no, you have to be part of the citizen panel. Right, or no, 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 you can be just be watching. Of course, I don't know how you're watching, but you have to be watching. Okay. You know, things mm. like that. Well, again tonight, you know, we tonight did not talk about anything. This is really becoming a show. This is really becoming a show about nothing. About nothing. Yeah. Seinfeldian. Very Seinfeldian. Uh, no, it really is very nice too. I, uh, uh, you know, it, it, there isn't that much to talk about. What do you want to talk about Israel? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's it is what it is, you know. Marjorie's been really depressed lately, and I said that's just because you watch MSNBC all the time, and they're always looking for horrible things to talk about. Yeah. You know, they're never they're not going to say, "Hey, you know, today is a pretty dead news day." Uh, why don't we play? Everybody come over. Listen, to Jack's we show uh, we we here time. at MSNBC uh, we're associated with the Cartoon Network, so we're going to run cartoons. You get to watch Charlie today. fall asleep on Jack's show. Yeah. 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 Anyway, thanks, that, Brian. That's fun. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 And, Everybody's and tomorrow night we'll talk. Work. Tomorrow night we'll talk. Do some work now, so. <laughs> nothing but <laughs> politics <laughs> tomorrow night. Uh, thanks, uh, Alan. Uh, thanks very much to Charlie Wallace. Thanks to Ray Renati. Thanks to the lovely and adorable Schmute. Uh And uh, thanks to John Larkin. Uh, Tony, thank you. And thank you to uh, Jeff for being here. Everybody. Uh, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. There'll be another citizen panel assembling right after this on the intersection with Jack Bishop. He does it via Skype, and GabNet Live is what you do to call on, on Skype. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow night, last show of the week. Uh, at same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, please, if you don't have a vaccination, get one. If you aren't vaccinated, wear a mask and stay safe out there and keep other people safe too. Good night, everybody.